Hey there, thank you so much for stopping by to hang out with me for a few minutes today. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new TerraMaster F4 424 Max. And just as a quick disclaimer, uh, TerraMaster did send me this device to review. However, they didn't send me any money or anything other than the TerraMaster F4 424 Max, and they won't see this review before you do. So everything in this video is my opinion, my experience, and they get no say on anything in this video. So with that out of the way, let's move on. First, we're gonna talk about the CPU specs a bit, and then we'll take a look at the device and some of the other specs. Then we'll talk about the user experience and what I'm actually going to be doing with the device. Now we've actually taken a look at a few different TerraMaster devices over the years, but this one is a bit different. So what I mean by that is the devices we've looked at in the past all basically had N100 style CPUs in them. And look, they were fine for being used as a file server or running very basic low intensity apps. But the TerraMaster F4 424 Max comes with an Intel Core i5-1235U 10 core CPU with eight gigs of DDR5 RAM. Um, so again, we're talking about a different class of CPU in this device than we've talked about with other devices in the past. So to kind of break down that CPU a little bit, it comes with two performance cores and eight efficiency cores that boost to 4.4 and 3.3 gigs respectively. So what's nice about this CPU is that it supports hardware transcoding of H.264 and H.265 and MPEG-4 and VC-1 up to 4K60. And we'll actually talk about transcoding with Plex a little later in this video. But before we get into that, let's take a look around the 424 Max just to see what we're actually getting. Okay, so this is, as it says right there, the F4 424 Max. This is TerraMaster's newest lineup product here. Uh, of course, it's got four bays and it's got four, it's actually got five lights right there. Let's see if we can get a good angle on that. There we go. Now you can see there are five lights, one for each drive, and of course the power. Uh, like I mentioned, it's got obviously uh, four drive bays here, uh, and they just, it's, it's really just that easy. Pop it out just like that. And uh, I've currently got uh, six, uh, or sorry, four six terabyte drives in here uh, that are doing very, very well. Uh, if we turn it over to this side, uh, we get we get some some fairly basic branding, which I appreciate, uh, and of course a warranty uh, tech support sticker there. Uh, more or less the same on the other side here, uh, like so, but uh, no no sticker this time. So there's that. Um, not much on the top, and uh, obviously not much on the bottom, other than uh, some air pass through and some feet and a little bit more information about the device. If we flip this over to the back, like so, uh, starting up here at the top, we've got a power button, uh, HDMI, two, two 10 gig ports right there. Super, super stoked about that. A couple of USB uh, th uh, Gen 3 ports. These are uh, 10 gig ports. We've got a USB-C 10 gig port and a 12 volt in barrel jack, and then like a 120 or a 140. I haven't actually measured that, but we get a big exhaust fan that does a really good job and does it very, very quietly. Um, and when you first get this device, only these two screws right here um, are, are open. Everything else is um, is all covered up and it looks very nice. Um, but when I tried to get the side off, uh, it didn't go. So I was like, well, I'll just take all the screws out. Um, but I didn't need to, because as I started pulling these out, this just slid off. So since we're talking about that, let's grab the only, over, the only screwdriver I've got right here. Let's try this. Maybe, there we go. All right, let's get these two screws out of here. So there we go. So all you've got to do, flip this over on its side and just push it forward. Just that, that little amount right there, this pops off. And then inside here, we can see that it does in fact have eight gigs of DDR5 RAM. And uh, I've currently got one M.2 slot here. This is a Gen 3 slot or a Gen 3 drive. We've got two Gen 4 slots. It looks like it says right there. Uh, I originally had uh, had these uh, Gen 4 uh, 512 gig. I think they're Gen 4. Anyway, I had two uh, 512 gig drives in here doing some caching testing, but I ended up switching to this because I need these for something else. Um, but that's that's really all there is that's serviceable here. Again, this is a single stick of DDR5 8 gig. It will support up to 30, or sorry, 64 gigs. I may end up throwing 32 gigs in it, but that's really all we've got going on on this uh, serviceable area here, other than, of course, uh, the, the drives 
that again, just they just pop in and out so, so easily without a lot of headaches. So uh, that is more or less what you're gonna get with the Terramaster F4 424 Max. So now that we've taken a look at the 424 Max as far as the aesthetics and the layout and that sort of thing, let's talk a bit about the setup process. Now I put four six terabyte hard drives in it along with two 512 gig NVMe drives and powered up the device. Now going through the setup process was actually pretty straightforward. In fact, it was almost too straightforward the problem is that by default, the system will set up the device how it thinks is best. Apparently there is an option to manually configure things, but I missed that. So it just set things up and put all four of my hard drives and both of my NVMe drives into a single storage pool. That's what's cool about tier eight is you can kind of mix and match drives, even if you don't actually mean to. But after I noticed what had happened, I destroyed the pool that was being built. And then I reconfigured it to be four six terabyte drives in a RAID 5 and the two NVMe drives as a caching setup. Once I was done fixing the storage pool, I decided I wanted to do an iPerf network test to see what kind of speeds the 10 gig network connection would actually get me. So I enabled SSH on the device and then connected to it from the terminal. Now, because I still had the dashboard up in the background, I noticed that I got a notification on the dashboard, letting me know that someone had connected to the device via SSH. And I actually really appreciated being able to get notifications like that. Anyway, I, I ran the iPerf test via the iPerf server that I've got set up on my uh, DS1621XS Plus Synology NAS. And I gotta say, it performed really well at a consistent nine and a half gigs of connectivity. And that was with just one of the 10 gig ports connected. So I think it's easy to say that I'm really, really happy with what the connection speeds are with this device. After that, I also did some testing with manually copying files over to the Terramaster F4 424 Max. And initially I wasn't as impressed. The speeds looked really good for a moment, but then tanked hard and fast with files larger than just a couple of gigs in size. And look, I actually tried transferring files from computers with two and a half gig connections and 10 gig connections. And the results always ended up the same. And look, I was, I was kind of confused about this for a minute, but then I decided to do basically the same test with my Synology DS923+, Plus, which is also a two core NAS. Now look, I know that the 424 Max is technically, and I'm using air quotes there, uh, a 10 core NAS, but eight of those cores are E cores, so they don't really affect the testing that's going on here. Just to kind of keep the comparison going, I did a similar file transfer on my DS1621XS+, Plus and got much faster speeds, but that's also a different class of device as well as having a lot more cores on that Xeon processor. So once I put all of that into perspective in my head, I was actually pretty happy with the results overall with the 424 Max. So just as another little side note here, I, I tried changing the SSD cache from balanced to read and write and had basically the same end results when transferring files to the F4 424 Max. So I know some people are going to mention that. And I just wanted to say I tried, I tried the read and write same result. So in our recent video, I, I talked about setting up my 923 plus from Synology as a backup for my DS1621XS Plus, and then realized that the 923 wasn't going to really suit my needs for backups due to the limited space on it, despite the drives that I just put in it. So I set up the Terramaster F4 424 Max to do a bunch of the heavy lifting. What I did was actually configure my 1621XS Plus to back up all of my media library to the 424 Max because it had enough hard drive space to do what I wanted to do with it. And I guess what I really did was duplicate my media library so that I could actually use the 424 Max as a backup for my Plex server if something ever went wrong with my 1621XS Plus. Or if I ever really needed to, I could use the Terramaster F4 424 Max as a Plex server if anything ever went wrong with my existing Plex setup. So overall, I'm gonna call that a win-win. So once the backup or duplication or whatever you wanna call it was done, I installed the Terramaster Plex app and started setting it up. Then I noticed it wasn't recognizing the library on the device and I was super confused. But after I did some digging, I realized that it was a permissions issue with the app user and I was able to correct that pretty easily and go back to doing what I was doing. So I got the libraries configured in Plex and was able to play basically everything that I threw at it on the 424 Max without any issues, but I wanted more. 
So I went back to the Plex control panel and found the transcoder settings and found that the Alder Lake UP3 GT2 UHD graphics from the i5 processor were just sitting there waiting to be selected. So select it, I did. And then I went back and forced the system to transcode by picking a movie file and then dropping the resolution way, way down. And I was able to verify that the system was using the UHD graphics by going back to the Plex control panel and seeing the little HW next to what I was playing. So all of that is to say that the TerraMaster F4 424 Max will be the backup solution for my media library, but will also be my backup Plex server in the event that something tragic happens with my current setup. But just because that's how I'm using this device doesn't mean that's all it's good for. Across the taskbar, there's a Docker icon. And if we click that, it asks us if we want to install the Docker Manager, Docker Engine, and Portainer. So I installed those, and now I can install whatever Docker containers I want to extend the functionality of the device. And I think that's actually pretty slick for just a few clicks on the dashboard. Now look, I, just as a, another a little side note, because we're full of those today, I did have to try a couple of times to get logged into Portainer, because when you install Portainer via this method, it doesn't go through the normal like creating account process that you would do if you manually installed Portainer. Turns out that the default username and password combo is just admin and admin. So there's a little bit of information if you need it. So look, I know a lot of people don't wanna use Docker and if you don't wanna use Docker to add more apps and functionality to your Terra Master device, there is an app store with a pretty decent selection of apps available. So at this point, I wanna talk just briefly about the actual user experience of TOS 6 uh, that comes with the Terra Master F4 424 Max. Uh, TOS is just what they call their operating system on the device. It is miles ahead of the previous versions that I've tested on other devices. And let me kind of explain. One of the first things that I noticed that gave Gave me a bit of hope uh, that this would be better is that you can change not only the desktop wallpaper but also the login wallpaper. I know this is kind of just a little a little nitpicky thing but on previous versions of TOS there were these cutesy Pinterest mom style wallpapers on the login page that you couldn't change or control and Honestly, to me, it felt disingenuous to say that these devices were geared towards small business and home business when the login screen felt like it belonged in an elementary school classroom just rotating images to calm the children. Then I discovered that it's got a great intuitive layout that just makes things easy to navigate. It's kind of, from my experience, kind of like if Windows 11 and Mac OS, or whatever they call it these days, had a baby, you'd get TOS 6. Also, it's got dark mode. And if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that I almost always go for dark mode. And the overall aesthetic of the new version of TOS 6 just looks good. Information is easily available and the OS actually looks pretty polished. And I really, really like that. So I guess the question here is what are my overall thoughts? Um, I like the TerraMaster F4 424 Max. The hardware looks sharp and it comes with a great configuration. The Intel Core i5-1235U 10-core CPU with eight gigs of DDR5 RAM is a great starting point, especially since you've got two RAM slots to put up to 64 gigs of RAM in. And having four drive bays that support up to 22 terabytes each is a huge perk. Also, having the two NVMe Gen 3x4 slots for storage or caching really is, in my opinion, a cherry on top. Oh, and, and we can't forget about the dual dual 10 gig RJ45 network ports. Now, of course, there is one thing that we haven't touched on yet, and that is the price of the device. Now, look, I did this entire review and wrote this entire script without knowing what the price of the device was going to be. So that never played a factor into any of my opinions on the device though it may play a factor on your opinion on the device. So uh, the TerraMaster F4 424 Max comes in at a launch price of $799, but that is next to a slashed out $899 price tag. So that's definitely not nothing. Now that said, there is also a 424 Pro uh, that comes with an Intel 8-core uh, i3-N305 processor. It also comes with two NVMe slots and it comes with 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM but uh, that is single channel RAM and it's already maxed out. And while it's got two LAN ports, they are both two and a half gig. And there's also a base model F4 424 that comes with an Intel N95, eight gigs of DDR5 RAM that's upgradable to 32 gigs, but again, it is only single channel and also has two two and a half gig LAN ports. Now the F4 424 Pro and the F4 424 base model, I guess, are launching at $699 and $499 respectively. So 
I guess do with that information what you will. So I guess the next big question is this, is the 799 price tag of the F4 424 Max worth it? And I guess ultimately that's going to depend on you and what your needs are and what your goals are and what your budget is. So with all of that said, I really would like to know what your thoughts are on the TerraMaster F4 424 Max down in the comment section below. Is this something you would consider? Have you been eyeballing this? Have you been waiting for more information on this? Let me know all of that in the comment section down below. And as per usual, I'll have links to everything in the video description if you want to pick one of these up for yourself or just get some more information. And while you're down there, you will find links to my other social medias if you wanna follow me there, or you can jump over to Patreon and become a patron for as little as a dollar a month to get early access when it's available and add free access all of the time. Of course, none of that is obligatory. It's just something that you can do if you want. Also, if you just wanna use my affiliate link when you buy something on Amazon, I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon for the referral, so that's something to consider as well. But I think that covers everything I wanted to cover in this video, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Again, I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.